are not eliminating God. They are eliminating models of God. You learn Sanskrit. Go back to your scriptures. Go back to your Vedas and realize that God is one. Division in Islam is prohibited. We understand the concept of God in Hinduism. Quran is the most positive book. Every day, more than 3,000 fetuses are being aborted in India after they identified that they're females. According to the statutes of 1996, U.S. Department of Justice, 2,730 women are being raped every day. Every 32 seconds, one woman is being raped. I've been raped in U.S. until the time I'm here. Islam has the solutions to the problems of the West. Of the West. Islam is misrepresented in the media. Islam is a religion of peace, peace to humanity. It does not only talk about peace, it demonstrates practically how peace and universal brotherhood can be achieved. We have one common parents. And our creature, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, is one and the same, one and the same, one and the same. <laughs> We have well-known and prominent speaker, Dr. Zakir Naik, who needs no introduction. He will be giving a lecture on the topic, Peace, Vision of Islam, Why This Event? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah, wa ala ali asabi ajmain, amma baad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Wa qul jal haq wa zaak al-batil. Inna la batila kaana zahuka. Inna ad-deena indu la al-islam. Rabbi shuhali sadri. Wa yassir li amri. Wa ahlu al-ugdata min lisani yafqahu kawli. My dear brother Yaseed Fasaga, brother Zakir Ahmed, brother Jeffrey, my respected elders, and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be on all of you. I have been given the present task of the inaugural speech and talk about why this event, peace, a vision of Islam. Today, we find that on the international media, whether it be the international satellite channels, the international newspapers, the international magazines, the radio broadcast stations, there is virulent propaganda about Islam. Islam is misrepresented in the media. The main objective of this exhibition, Peace, a Vision of Islam, is to present the correct picture of Islam, to remove the misconception from the minds of the human beings. And I started my talk by quoting a verse of the glorious Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, وَقُلْ جَالْ حَقْ وَزَاكَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ لَبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُكَ When truth is hurled against falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood, is by its nature bound to perish. Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the word silm, which means to submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is Almighty God. So in short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God and anyone who acquires peace by submitting his will to Almighty God, in Arabic, he's called as a Muslim. The misconceptions in the media, especially after the 11th of September 2001, has reached epidemic levels. 
And we find that this religion of peace, that is Islam, has been labeled as a religion of terrorism. The main objective of this conference is to present the correct picture of Islam. As you might have read the brochure, there are various pavilions, there are various events. One of the major Islamic exhibitions consists of about 275 posters. The main objective of these posters is to present the picture of Islam so that the human beings have an urge to know more about the religion. When you read the newspaper, there are headlines. If the headline is attractive, the person, he reads the newspaper. And when you read an article, the first paragraph, it is a synopsis of the article which holds the attention of the reader. If the first paragraph is not attractive, the reader stops reading further. So the first paragraph should be attractive so that the reader is compelled to read the article further. So these posters mainly, the objective is to serve as headlines or the first paragraph. The details are mentioned in the various books which are also exhibited in the exhibition. For example, one of the posters it mentions, today's gospel truths, number one, Muslims are terrorists. Number two, a four-sided triangle. Number three, the earth is flat. Number four, two plus two is equal to five. These are the gospel truths today. We know that how can a triangle have four sides? Four-sided triangle, it's opposite. Similarly, Muslims are terrorists. Muslim is a person who acquires peace by submitting his will to Almighty God. So how can he be a terrorist? These are opposite. As opposite as a four-sided triangle, as untrue as the earth is flat, as wrong as two plus two is equal to five. These posters serve as headlines so that you can read more about Islam. There are various sections. One of the sections in these posters is of women in Islam, the women's rights in Islam. And one of the posters, it speaks about the hijab that is the modest dressing for a woman. And the points are described in brief. There are basically six points according to the Quran and the Hadith. How women should be dressed, the complete body should be covered, except the face and the hands up to the wrist. These many scholars say also should be covered. The second is the clothes they wear. It should not be so tight so that it reveals the figure, it should be loose. Third, it should not be transparent. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And sixth, it should not resemble and be a sign of an unbeliever. In the talks that will follow in this mega event, Peace to Humanity, there will be many international speakers coming, even speakers locally, who will be giving talks on these aspects, and how to convince regarding the modesty, the hijab, dress code of a woman. Just by giving an example, suppose there are two twin sisters, both of them are very beautiful, equally beautiful. And one twin sister, she is wearing the Islamic hijab, her complete body covered except the face and the hands up to the wrist. And the other twin sister, she is wearing the Western clothes, the mini skirt or shorts. And if both of them are walking down the streets of Chennai, and if round the corner there is a hooligan who is waiting for a catch, who is waiting to tease a girl, I'm asking the question, which girl will he tease? Will he tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab? or will it tease the girl wearing the mini skirts or shorts? But natural, he will tease the girl wearing the mini skirts or shorts. As Allah rightly says in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 59, that, O oh Prophet, tell your wives 
and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. These posters that are exhibited, about 275 in number, they act as headlines. Many of them, they contain verses of the Quran. And besides the English translation, it also contains the translation of the regional languages. Assalamu alaikum, I am Dr. Idris. You are watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Tawheed is Noah's Ark. Whoever embarks will be delivered, and whoever refuses will be among the losers. Tawheed is the key of paradise and the only way to salvation. To attain eternal bliss, to attain never-ending life, get in on the ark, hold on tight, and never let go. Watch as Sheikh Salim Al Amri explains the basics of Islamic belief and worship in Back to Basics every Thursday at 10 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. So are you. In these times of ignorance and confusion, we have never been more in need of holding on firmly to our Islamic belief. Those simple things that define you as a Muslim and teaching them to our families and our children. Join me, Muhammad Tim Humble, as we go back to basics in the basics of a Muslim's belief. Polish your personality in the light of divine wisdom to live like a true Muslim in the basics of a Muslim's belief every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. There are models about 25 models which present the two pictures of Islam. For example, one model is of a Quran, and the verse mentioned below is the verse of the Quran of Surah Baqarah, chapter number two. Verse number 208, which says, O oh, you believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly. As if you want to enter into Islam, enter wholeheartedly, not just partly. And the Quran has got various commandments. And if a person only follows a few commandments, it is not appropriate. And the model shows that the Quran has got seven strings and one rope where all the strings are joined together. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 103, Hold the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. We have to hold all together the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enter into Islam wholeheartedly. If you only follow one aspect of Islam saying that, okay, I will give charity, but I will not pray, I will not perform the pilgrimage, the hajj, it's part of Islam. Or the other person may say that I will perform the hajj, but I will not give charity. Allah says in the Quran, Almighty God says, that you have to follow completely. So if you hold the rope, the complete rope, all the commandments, then only will you get the true peace in this world and in the hereafter. We believe that we should not convey the message of peace only to the elders or to the adults. We should see to it that we introduce the message of peace right from the childhood. And we find today that in this materialistic world, the way our children are being misled 
we have to take care of our children. It's the duty of every parent to see to it that they give the proper atmosphere to the children. Today we find that the satellite channels, which has many children programs, we have video cassettes, we have films on the children, we have cartoons, all of these, they don't actually convey the message of peace. And most of them, they speak about violence. That's the reason. There are psychologists in states and in the European countries, they say the maximum damage done to the child is the programs on the satellite channel. And there are various articles we read that a child in the third standard, he sees all these violent movies. Once he has an argument with his school friends, he takes the gun of his father and he shoots a couple of them. All this has been instilled in his mind by what he sees. What a child sees, it becomes part of his nature. When we tell to the people, the children, that they should not see such violent movies, or movies that take you away from peace, we have to present them with video cassettes, which talk about peace. There are various Islamic cartoons and animations which present the true picture of Islam, the true picture of peace. And it inculcates in the child the nature which makes him peaceful. We have got various cartoons, various animations, especially catering to the children from the age of 3 to 12. There are audio cassettes for children. And most of the audio cassettes that are there for the nursery level and for the pre-primary level, they don't have a message. For example, I remember in school we had learned the poem, Ba Ba Black Ship, Have You Any Wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full, one for my master, one for my dame, and one for my person who lay down the rail. Then we had Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Fine, these have a certain message. They teach you new words. But you find, while you're being taught new English words, we find that the basic message, Jack and Jill, is talking about a friend, a boyfriend and a girlfriend going to a hill, or Baba Black Sheep talking about a dame. In that a child gets programmed that, fine, it's good to be with girls. Girl and boy can be together and they can enjoy, have friends. In fact, our children should get the proper message of peace. There are audio cassettes, Islamic audio cassettes, songs such as various songs collected from different parts of the world, from states, from UK, from Singapore, from Malaysia. It speaks, for example, I am very strong, I am very strong, I love Allah, he is my best friend. Anyway, my voice is not good. I hope Brother Yusuf Islam was here. He would have given a better demonstration. So these poems and Islamic songs, I am very strong, I love Allah, he is my best friend. So all these, besides a child learning new words, he comes closer to his creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are various songs, for example, the children of the world, where it shows how Islam brings all the various children of the world, from Africa, from states, from UK, from Singapore, from Malaysia, how does it get them together? There are songs, which speak about animals. They are Muslims too. So let's watch what we do. Let's do what we can for the creatures of Islam. Here, the child is learning that the animals, they are also Muslims. They are creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to love them. We have to respect them. We should not hurt them, irrespective whether they're big or small, whether they're short or tall. So these songs, besides a child, his vocabulary increasing, he comes closer to the message of peace. I remember when I was a kid in the late 70s and the early 80s, how a child, you know, wants to learn a computer, so we have a toy computer, and you press a button, and my friend, I remember he had a computer, you press a button, and the song comes. Beat it, whatever it was, of Michael Jackson of that time, or Funky Town, here, there are computers for children. The moment you press button number one, you hear the voice of Imam Sudesh. 
আলহামদুলিল্লাহ হিরবেল আলমিন আর রহমান রাহিম মালিকে আহমেদ্দিন এনি ম্যাম নোরা কারি সো ইয়ার চাইল্ড বিসাইজ গেটিং এন্টারটেন হি ইজ কামিং ক্লোজার টু ইস ক্রিয়েটার ক্লোজার টু দ্য মেসেজ অফ পিস টুডে উই হ্যাভ ইন দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড ভেরিয়াস গেমস উইচ আর মেন টু এন্টারটেন দ্য চাইল্ড ইসলাম ইজ ফর এন্টারটেনমেন্ট বাট দ্য এন্টারটেনমেন্ট শুড বি হালাল it should be positive it should not be negative we have today in the society we have games like lotto or lottery it is nothing but gambling which islam prohibits in surah maida chapter number 5 verse number 90 allah says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu o you who believe innama al khamru wal maisuru most certainly intoxicants and gambling well anzabu al islamu dedication of stones divination of arrows rishth min amli shaitan these are satan's handiwork First, I need to look into flihun. Abstain from this handiwork that you may prosper. So we have to substitute these games with Islamic games. There are some games which are just normal. It entertains the child, but does not get him closer to the message of truth. We have games such as snakes and ladders. There's an Islamic version which has been invented in UK. It is slopes and ladders. Instead of start. It is Bismillah, in the name of God. When you go a few blocks ahead, there is mention that you have been offering salah daily. You go up a ladder. There it is. You are thanking your Creator, Almighty God. Few blocks ahead, you are disrespectful to your parents. You come down the slope. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is not happy with you. Go a few blocks ahead, you are reading the Quran daily. You go up a ladder. you are getting guidance from your creator almighty god go a few blocks ahead you have told a lie you come down a slope so these games besides the child getting entertained he is getting the message that he should respect his parents he should not tell a lie he should thank almighty god daily he should acquire the guidance from the last and final revelation of the quran so islam is for entertainment but the entertainment should be positive there are games which i remember to my childhood the very famous game the monopoly or we have the trade in india where it teaches a child how to become a businessman buying and selling of land here we have the islamic version called the steps to paradise which i've got from uk too here it teaches the child how to attain jannah how to attain paradise and instead of dollars or rupees you have sawabs notes 5000 sawab 10000 sawab 20000 sawab there you come on a slot it says that you have offered salah daily you get a reward of 20000 sawab you go a few blocks ahead you went to a dance party you have to pay a fine of 10000 sawab go a few blocks ahead you have told a lie you have to pay a fine of 5000 sawab every child wants to win the game so if you go for dance parties everyone knows he goes he stops going so that at least he can win the game these games besides entertaining the child it gets him closer to the creator almighty god there are jigsaw puzzles of great wonders of the world i feel tower taj mahal etc we have jigsaw puzzle of the harmain of makkah of medina we have legos where a child learns to make a car or aeroplane here we have legos in which a child can build the various mosques the different designs of mosque with the lego he builds a mosque so he comes close to the hadith that anyone who builds a mosque in this world we get a house in the jannah this is a unique event not only in india but internationally only those people who know the value of the media and presenting islam only a dai can know that believe me this is the need of the hour this is the need of the hour it is the duty of us muslims that we have to clarify the misconceptions that is there in the minds of the human beings today it's our duty that we have to convey the message allah says in the quran in surah al imran chapter number 3 verse number 110 allah says kuntum khaira ummatan khrijat lin nas Oh, Muslims, ye are the best of people evolved for mankind. 
Allah is giving us an honor and calling us a khaira ummah, the best of people. There is no honor without responsibility. The responsibility is mentioned in the same verse. Allah continues and says, Ta'miruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna an munkar. Wa tu'minuna billah. Because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. The reason Allah calls us the khaira ummah, the best of people, is because we are supposed to enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. If we do not enjoy what is good and if we do not forbid what is wrong, we aren't fit to be called as Muslims. We aren't fit to be called as people, those who promote peace and submit the will to Almighty God. We aren't fit to be called as khaira ummah, the best people for humanity. <laughs> At the time of Nuh, peace be upon him, the floods swept the entire earth, sparing only those who believed. Today, floods of shirk, floods of innovation, and floods of desires and lust are sweeping the whole earth. Al-Imam Malik ibn Anas of Medina said that the Sunnah is the Ark of Nuh. Whoever boards it is saved, and whoever refuses is drowned and is doomed forever. Join me in Al-Arba'een Al-Nawawiyyah, the 40 hadith compiled by Al-Imam Al-Nawawi. Join Asim Al-Hakim in Al-Arba'een Al-Nawawiyyah tomorrow at 11 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Students of Islamic International School showcase on eve of the IIS annual day event. Welcome you to the grand finale of the Islamic International School. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Performances par excellence. Recitations so mysterious. Man finds means for momentary pleasure when I am with him and goes astray. <laughs> they are the enemy. So beware of them. This is the summary of our Kyrgyzstan expenses this month. And don't you forget who's the boss of oh, yeah? Watch these cool kids impress and uplift your hearts, your minds, and your iman. With Allah's help, this will be a memorable event. Wiz Kids, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. The solution for humanity. Today, when we present Islam, we have to do it professionally. And a beloved prophet, and Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, they always stressed on quality. We require quality work. The reason today, the Muslims, are misrepresented on the media is because we do not have the correct presentation on the media. We don't have a single international newspaper of our own. 
which can present the true picture of Islam. Islam and Muslims and its derivatives, these words occur in the Quran no less than 96 times. And the word Salam occurs in the Quran no less than 42 times. Islam and Muslims along with the derivatives occurs 96 times and the word Salam occurs 42 times. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 54, Allah says, وَإِذَا جَاءَقَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ When those who come to you, who believe in our signs, wish them, Assalamu alaikum, peace be on you. Allah says, whenever those who come to you, who believe in the signs of Almighty God, you have to wish them, peace be on you. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 86, Allah says, وَإِذَا هُيِّتُمْ بِتَيَّتُمْ فَهِيُّ بِعَسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَانَ قُلِّ شَيْنْ أَلِيمًا Which means, whenever a courteous greeting is given to you, wish back more courteously or at least the same. For Allah is careful in keeping of accounts. For example, if someone wishes you, Assalamu alaikum, may peace be on you, you have to wish back more courteously. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. If someone says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, you have to wish back more courteously. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. If someone says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, if you cannot better it, at least say the same. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. For example, if someone says, Assalamu alaikum, and reply back, Wa alaikum assalam. The words are the same, but that's coming from the depths of the heart. Even that is better. So Allah says, wish back more courteously, or at least the same. This is the universal greeting. Of all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 36, in the upper room, when he comes to the apostles, he wishes them by saying, Shalom alaikum. In Hebrew, Shalom alaikum. In Arabic, Assalamu alaikum. In English, may peace be on you. And this is the theme of the conference, Salam. Peace. It's the best form of greeting. But unfortunately today, we have in a society, there are different types of greeting. One of the most common greeting is good morning or good evening. Imagine if suppose there's a calamity which takes place, if someone's father dies and you wish him good morning. What is so good about the morning? His father has expired and you tell him good morning. And when you go to school, it's common practice. When the teacher enters the class, all the students say, good morning, sir. And the teacher replies back, good morning to you. Imagine the teacher may have had a fight with his wife. He may be cursing the morning. He may be saying, never such a morning should come again in his life. But yet he is forced to reply, good morning. The best and the most universal greeting is, assalamu alaikum, or peace be on you irrespective of whether a person's father expires, irrespective of whether a person has a fight with his wife, irrespective of whether he's raiding cats and dogs, irrespective of whether it's a happy moment or a sad moment. The best greeting you can give is assalamu alaikum, peace be on you. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 63, that the servants of Allah are those who walk with humility and when the ignorant approach them, they say, Kalu Salama, peace be on you. Allah repeats the message in Surah Qasas, chapter number 28, verse number 55, that those who give vain talks, just tell them, peace be on you. Assalamu alaikum. Means a person who's intelligent, if person gives vain talk, even if he speaks again in Islam, tell him, Assalamu alaikum, or say, Kalu Salama, peace be on you. That's it. And if you analyze all the verses quoted by the skeptics attacking Islam, that Islam promotes terrorism, and one of the common verses of the Quran quoted by critics, including Arun Shuri, is Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 5. He says, wherever you find a kafir, into bracket, a non-Muslim, you kill them. The reply to this has been given by me when I came to Chennai last year. 
on the topic jihad and terrorism, I don't reply it again. It's in context in a battlefield. When the enemies come to kill you, don't get scared, fight back. The context is there. I've discussed in several of my talks and question and session. But the point to be noted, the next verse immediately, Surah Tawbah chapter number 9, verse number 6, which is never quoted by these skeptics, is that if the enemies want asylum, if they want peace, don't just give it to them. Escort them to a place of security. So all the verses, if you analyze, almost all, which talk about killing the enemies, but natural, this fighting with the Quran speaks is to promote peace. And the common verse quoted of the Quran of Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 60, that cause terror in the hearts of the enemies. Again, quote out of context. It means that in the battlefield, when the enemies come to attack you, when they come to kill you, don't get scared, fight back. Any army general in the battlefield will tell his soldiers, don't get scared, fight back. It's but natural. So what's wrong in Quran saying that? But that's not the end of it. Next verse, Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 61 says, but if the enemies want peace, if they incline for peace, you too incline for peace. Islam is a religion of peace. All these verses quoted in the Quran, wherever it talks about fighting as a last resort, it is fighting for peace to be established. Every country has a police force. This police force many a time uses force so that the criminals can be arrested. They use force against the anti-social element so that peace can prevail, so that we people, citizens of the country, can walk freely. So these police sometimes use this force so that peace will prevail in the country. Similarly, Islam and Quran talks that force can be used as a last resort only to let peace prevail. If this is why the skeptics say that Quran promotes terrorism, they fail to realize that such terrorism is even promoted by the Bible in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, in the book of Numbers. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he too promoted this terrorism. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 22, he too told the apostles, take a sword and go and fight. Mahabharat talks about the same terrorism. It's a fight between the haq and the batil, truth and falsehood. Bhagavad Gita, Shri Krishna, he gives advice to Arjun that why are you not fighting? Have you become important? Shri Krishna tells Arjun, if you don't fight, you shall not get paradise. This is a terrorism to promote peace, which is mentioned in almost all the major scriptures of the world. There are two types of terrorism. One is a positive terrorism to promote peace in the world. The other is terrorizing the innocent people, which we Muslims should never indulge. And Dr. Adam Pearson said that people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Islam, this religion, has the solution to the problems of humankind. And this last and final revelation of Almighty God has the solutions to the problems of mankind. Number one is that all the human beings should agree that our Creator is only one God. Only if we agree that the Creator of all the people, irrespective of whether they live in America, in Canada, in UK, in India, in Saudi Arabia, our Creator is the same one Almighty God. This is the basic pillar for peace. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any human being, unless it be for murder or spreading mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any human being, it is as though he has saved the whole of humanity. Quran says anyone, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for spreading mischief in the land, for spreading corruption, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves a human being, whether it be a Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though he has saved the whole of humanity. 
Allah says in the Quran that you should give charity. Every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, 85 grams of gold, he should give 2.5% of that saving every lunar year in charity. It is called a zakat. If every rich human being gives zakat, poverty will be eradicated. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. Quran says do not rob. Quran says that love your neighbors, feed your neighbors. Our beloved Prophet said that he is not a Muslim who sleeps with a full stomach while his neighbor, he is hungry. And the person asked, who is a neighbor? The Prophet said, 40 houses next to you is a neighbor. Quran says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 188, that do not use your wealth as a bait for the judges so that you may eat other people's wealth. Bribing is prohibited in Quran. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 26 and 27, that do not be a spendthrift. Do not do israf. For verily, a person who is a spendthrift is the brother of the devil. Allah says in the Quran, which was recited by the Qari, in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 11 and 12, that do not backbite. Do not call each other with offensive nicknames. Do not spy on one another. Do not be suspicious, because many a time, suspicion is a sin. And further, it continues, the Qari recited, Surah Hujurat, chapter 49, verse number 13, where Allah says, Ya yuwan nasu, inna khalaqnaakum min zakrin wa unsa wa ja'alnaakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila alitarafu. Inna qalamkum in the law yatkaakum, inna law alimun kabeer. Which means, O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you shall recognize each other, not that you shall despise each other. And the most honored in the sight of Almighty God is the person who has taqwa. The criteria for judgment in the sight of Almighty God, it's not wealth, it's not sex, it's not color, it's not caste, but it is taqwa, it is God consciousness, it is righteousness, it is piety. The only way that all the human beings can come under one banner is that we have one common parents. And our creature, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, is one and the same. Islam is a religion of peace, peace to humanity. It does not only talk about peace, it demonstrates practically how peace and universal brotherhood can be achieved. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother in Islam, Abdul Rahim Green, and you're watching Peace TV. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. The most profitable business. Would you like to know the business in which you earn the maximum profit? The secret is given in the glorious Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 261. The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain, which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies his reward to whom he wills. If you spend your wealth in the way of Allah, you will get a return of 700 times. In business terminology, you will get a profit of 70,000%. Is there any business you know of in which you will get a better return? Invest today in the way of Allah. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. To uplift Iman, Iman, every believer should have, should have. If we really want to establish success in our lives, an eagerness to learn about Islam, a desire to correct wrongs, be firm in your belief, in our belief of Tawiyah. The thirst to avoid evil, focus on Allah, He won't let us down, and put all of our faith. And the passion to follow our Creator. All of our hope, all of our trust in Almighty Allah. Imam Qasim Khan. Allah is our help. We have to totally internalize.
imbibed the essentials to keep a regular check on our Iman in Strengthening Your Iman every Thursday at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. And one of the pillars of Islam is Salah. I say Salah is the programming towards righteousness. It's the best way how a doctor tells you that for a healthy body, you require minimum three meals. Similarly, for a peaceful soul, you require minimum five times prayer. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Adan, chapter number 75, hadith number 692, the Prophet said, before starting Salah, that straight in your rows, stand shoulder to shoulder and ankle to ankle. It's mentioned in the Hadith book of Sunnah Abu Dawood, volume number one, in the book of Salah, chapter number 245, Hadith number 666. A beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before offering Salah, he turned around and said, that straight in your rows, stand shoulder to shoulder and ankle to ankle and do not leave any gaps for the Satan. Close in your gaps so that the Satan doesn't come in. Here the Prophet, he was talking about the Satan of caste, of color, of creed. That when we stand for Salah, we stand shoulder to shoulder, irrespective whether rich or poor, black or white, yellow or brown, king or pauper. When you stand for Salah, when you stand for prayers, we stand shoulder to shoulder. We practically demonstrate minimum five times a day universal brotherhood and how peace can be obtained. And the best example of international universal brotherhood and peace is the fifth pillar of Islam, that is Hajj. It's compulsory that every adult Muslim who has the means to perform Hajj should at least perform the pilgrimage to the holy city of Makkah in the month of Hajj at least once in his lifetime. People from different parts of the world, from America, from UK, from Singapore, from Malaysia, from India, from Pakistan, different parts of the world, the men, they are dressed up in two pieces of unsewn cloth, preferably white. You cannot identify the person standing next to you, whether it's king or a pauper, whether it's rich or poor. Practical demonstration of universal brotherhood. And this message of peace is not only meant for the Muslims or for the Arabs. Allah says that this Quran is the last and final revelation of Almighty God. And because it was the last and final revelation, it was not only sent for the Muslims or the Arabs. Allah says in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number one, Alif, Lam, Ra. This is a message given to thee, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so that you may lead the humankind from darkness to light, not only the Muslims or the Arabs, but the whole of humankind from darkness to light. Peace, a vision of Islam, is not meant only for the Muslims or the Arabs, it is meant for the whole of humanity. And for ultimate peace, I'd like to end my talk by the formula given in the Quran for ultimate peace in Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number one to three, which says, Wal Asr, inna insana lafi khusr, illa lazin amanu, wa amilu salihati, wa tawasaw bil haqqi, wa tawasaw bil sabr. That by the token of time, man is well in a state of loss. Almighty God says, man is in khasara, is in loss, except those who have these four criteria. Only those who have these four criteria will enter Jannah, will go to paradise. Allah says, first is Iman, faith. Next is Amal Salihat, that is righteous deed. Third is inviting people to truth, that is doing dawah, calling people towards the truth. And fourth is inviting people to patience and perseverance. I started my talk by quoting a verse of the Quran from Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, which says, وَقُلْ جَالْ حَقْ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوكَ When truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. I would like to end my talk with the quotation of the glorious Quran of Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, which says, إِنَّ الدِّينَ إِنَّ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ The only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is the religion of peace by submitting your will to Almighty God. Wa akhru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
Jazakallah Khair. Now we go on to the next part of their agenda, which is the question answer session. Sisters, please, uh, there are sisters waiting. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. I would like to ask you if a woman has such a pivotal role in Islam, why is that she's prevented from interacting men? And today is an extremely competitive world. I mean, how without interacting with men, writing for competitive exams and appearing for such, you can stop yourself from growing? The sister asked the question, today is a world of competition. Without women interacting, how can they compete in this world, etc.? Sister, Islam is a religion which has uplifted the women, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the major benefactor. There is not a single rule in Islam which prevents the upliftment of the women. But in the name of upliftment, Islam does not believe in degrading women. If you see history, sister, history of Babylon, history of Greek, history of Egypt civilization, women were only used for sex and pleasure. And today, if you see the Western world, the Western society, talking of uplifting the woman, have actually degraded her to a status of mistresses, of concubine, of society butterflies, which are mere tools in the hands of pleasure seekers and sex marketers. Today, the Western society, talking about women's liberalization, it is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of a body, of degradation of an honor, and deprivation of a soul. Sister, Islam never, never wants to prevent the women from upliftment. But I don't know of a single job or a single competition in which a woman does not interact with men and she cannot advance. All the jobs which involve unnecessary interaction of the men aren't jobs which are fit for the women to be done. There's not a single modest job which I know which prevents the woman about the modesty role. If there's a job, any job, which prevents you from doing the hijab, hijab not only of the body, not only of the clothes, the way you talk, the way you behave, the way you think, all this comes under hijab. This hijab which I spoke earlier about the hijab that the sister asked me, that's one part of hijab that is a cloth. There are hadith in which the wives of the Prophet, they did cover their face. But everything what the Prophet did is not first fath. Similarly, for the wives of the Prophet, because the Ummul Mumineen, they were mother of the believers. For them, it was a different degree. So they did cover the face, but it's not for all the women. So here, if we analyze, sister, the hijab, besides hijab of the clothes, there's hijab where a person talks, the way a person behaves. And these people, when they talk about equality, when the Western world talks about equality, I ask them that when men and women are equal, so why don't you have a boxing match between the men and women together? Why? They're equal. Even they agree that they're not equal. When we have a 100 meter sprint, why do the women run differently? Why do the men run differently? Why? Are they degrading the women? Yes or no? So you realize that these people, they have their own way of thinking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the man and woman different. Physiologically they're different, biologically they're different, psychologically different. Depending upon the roles what they have been given, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the do's and don'ts for these people. Not that a man and woman cannot interact. Unnecessary interaction is to be avoided. And believe me, sister, a woman can take part. We have examples, and if you hear my talk on women rights in Islam, sister, there are various examples. Now, in the Western world, when they sit for examination, men and women sit together, so there they consider them equal. But when they run a 100 meters dash or have a boxing match, they don't consider them equal. When the Western world can differentiate, that here they can take part together, here they cannot take part. Why can't our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows the best? So unnecessary interaction, sister, I call it the khutwatu shaitan. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 168, Allah says, Ya you lazina amunu, O oh, you believe, do not follow the footsteps of the devil. See, most of the places Allah says, do not follow the footsteps of the devil, do not follow the devil is right. That's only a couple of times. Majority of time Allah says, do not follow the footsteps of the devil. And I give an example, sister. One example of footsteps of the devil is that suppose there is an average Muslim. If a lady comes to him and says, let's spend the night together. He says, spend the night, haram, not allowed. He will say no. The same Muslim, who's the average Muslim, if a lady phones, speaking to a girl on the phone, what's the problem? So he speaks to the girl on the phone. After a few calls, he said, let's have maybe tea in McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know whether it's in Madras or not. Or let's go to fast food joint. Going with a girl to fast food joint, no problem. After some time, she says, let's have dinner in a restaurant. 
Dinner with the girl is no problem. When she said, let's spend the night together, spend the night together, no problem. These are khutbah to shaitan. It's not mentioned in the Quran. I'm giving my own example. Khutbah to shaitan. So therefore, stop it at the first level itself. When it's a requirement, when you have to speak to the man, when requirement in emergency, etc., yes, you can do with lowering your gaze. Suppose you're a lady and you get sick and there's a gen doctor, very well, you can go to the gen doctor. That doesn't mean you cannot speak to the gen doctor. When required, but with lowering your gaze, with modesty, but unnecessary gossiping what they have in colleges. In colleges, they gossip, very common, not only in the Western world. In Western world, according to the statistics of USA, more than 90% of the women, before they pass school, they have lost their virginity. Do you know that? Same in UK. Even in Bombay, I was shocked. More than 50% of the girls, before they pass their school, they lose their virginity. I was shocked. Why? Common having girlfriend, boyfriend, you go, you know, it's common. If you don't have a girlfriend, then you're considered to be abnormal. So the thing is, sister, these are khutwa to shaitan, and we want to uplift the woman. And these people in the name of trying to uplift the woman, art and culture, no problem. They want to sell their daughters and their mothers on the screen. And someone told me, one of the ads which won an award, the BMW ad, somebody told me, the BMW ad, it's a car which is very famous. For the youngsters, like how Mercedes, you know Merck, is a very famous car. For the youngsters, it's a BMW. There's a very famous ad, someone told me, there's a girl standing on a bikini in front of the car, and it says, test driver now. Who, the girl or the car? What are they doing? They're selling our daughters. They are selling their sisters. We Muslims, we don't want that. In the name of upliftment, we don't want to sell our daughters, don't want to sell our sisters. We respect them, we love them, and we revere them. This is the reason, sister, this does not degrade the woman. It uplifts the woman. Hope that answers the question. Man is the secret of Allah in his creation, that which he places into the hearts of those that he loves. He loves. He loves. He loves. He loves. Once it glows, nothing is stronger that can drive a person, and nothing is sweeter that a person can experience. It's a glimpse of paradise that you see with the eyes of your heart. Unlock your Iman with my new series, Imanology, The Fundamentals of Faith. The fundamentals of faith. Enrich your Iman by following the factors that would open the door of eternal blessings for all believers in Imanology, the study of Iman tomorrow at 5 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Zain Pika and Daud Wonsby Ali. Hey kids, time is very precious. This life is a gift from Allah. Utilize this gift for here and hereafter. Enjoy this gift in the light of the Quran and Hadith. Enjoy Islam with us, Zain and Daud. Enjoying Islam with Zain and Daud every Monday at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV.
the solution for humanity.